Hello and welcome to this uh, 20th lecture on microsystems fabrication by advanced manufacturing processes. A quick review of the previous lecture, uh, we were uh, discussing about electro stream drilling in uh, great details. I uh, just like to recall that it is a process where there is uh, the electrolyte itself is the electrode. Okay. So, the electrolyte is an acid stream which is negatively charged and it represents the cathode. Now, although it emanates out of a, uh, an electrode which is otherwise insulating in nature, uh, it uh, generates a cathodic effect, a virtual cathodic effect and uh, the workpiece made the anode dissolutes and whatever ions come out of the workpiece are not precipitated or uh, they, they do not react with any other constituent in the acid electrolyte itself and so they are dissolved as ions and therefore, the process does not need any reflushing uh, because there is typically no nucleation or no particle growth uh, based on electrochemical processes. So, we looked at how ESD can be used to drill inclined and steep angular holes and cavities. We also talked about the two different variants uh, that ESD has called the dwell drilling and the penetration drilling depending on whether the the stream dispenser, the electrolyte stream dispenser is a static or is moving at a constant rate or a constant feed towards the workpiece. Uh, we also sort of uh, did a recap of the ECM uh, basic process and the process capability associated with ECM and then we talked about how electrochemical micro machining is uh, an absolute need for the several applications in the industry and discuss some of these applications and some research uh, in the area of ECMM or EMM. Just to recap a little bit, we uh, showed this particular illustration here, where <coughs> with the various pulse durations in the nanosecond regime varying between 50 uh, nanosecond to 2 nanosecond, we could see how uh, the resolution changed and how the interpenetration distance also changed proportionately. So, uh, in this particular illustration, we used a 0.2 molar HCl uh, pulse amplitude and then we also considered uh, a 2.2 volt uh, voltage with a 10 percent duty cycle. Okay. And then we also, the, or the authors in this particular case tried to also measure the work piece and the tool uh, voltages, surface potentials. Uh, and found out a machining speed of 2 millimeter per minute okay. experimentally as well as through uh, modeling approaches. <coughs> so, what also is uh, important is the spatial resolution and uh, the width of the lateral gap between the tool and the workpiece obtained for different pulse durations that is the gap width is calibrated as a function of pulse duration and you can see the gap width steadily increases with the pulse duration, meaning thereby that more is the uh, uh, more is the duty cycle of the pulse or more is the duration during the uh, during which the pulse remains on uh, the work piece is subjected to more voltage for a greater amount of time and dissolves more. Okay. Uh, we ECMM is also applied in this particular case where ultra short voltage pulses again are used for obtaining um, this copper tongue for example, okay, this is an SEM image of this copper tongue uh, and this has a thickness of close to about 2.5 microns. Okay, this is how small it is uh, thickness wise, it is etched by a 2 megahertz sequence of 50 nanosecond pulses of duration uh, of, of magnitude 1.6 volts. The tool in this case is a 10 micrometer diameter mechanically flattened piece of platinum and it just uh, you know very nicely compares to an ant leg. This here right here is an ant leg and uh, you can see the scale is almost comparable in the SCM image which is above and below uh, <coughs> to each other which shows uh, the, the typically the process capability of the system. Okay. This is a 50 micron scale, this is a 5 micron scale, so about a tenth. Uh, that is about the comparison. So, uh, this uh, particular machining process used an electrolyte which was 0 0.01 molar hydrochloric uh, 
HClO4 and 0 0.1 molar CuSO4. The other illustration is given by an in situ formation of a single hole on a gold uh, substrate by using a voltage pulse of duration 50 nanoseconds again of a 2 volt magnitude and this is utilizing 1 molar copper sulphate and 0 0.5 molar uh, sulfuric acid solutions. Now, the hole is formed in the location uh, of the tip during the application of the pulse and uh, this is represented by the black arrow. The hole formation process, the initiation of the hole formation process has been shown in this particular uh, schematic uh, photograph and you can see that there are about three single uh, copper clusters on gold formed by three 50 nanosecond 3 volt pulses uh, to the STM tip uh, again in the same electrolyte solution. Okay. So, uh, due to the formation of this kind of a copper so called electrode you can have an inverted feature hole uh, created as in figure A. But what is important for me to tell you is the resolution here, this is being done at a resolution of 10 nanometers which is way way beyond what you have seen so far. So, with ultra short voltage pulses you can actually write as well as develop tools or electrochemical machining at this particular scale of few tens of nanometers. Some other important features of this is the tunneling voltage and current, the tunneling voltage is in the range of minus 300 milli volts and the current is about 1 nano ampere. Okay, in this particular case. So, that is about how small the ECM process can go and still have a resolution. So, this resolves very well with one of some of the current high energy beam processes like FIB X-ray lithography so on so forth. So, this is another example uh, borrowed from Zoo et al in 2009 where they are talking about a perforated cathode. Okay. So, this is a perforated cathode and the anode here is the work piece and there is an insulation layer which is in between okay, uh, which is also like a mask. So, there is a mask which exposes certain regions of the cathode to the uh, work piece. And uh, owing to this particular uh, arrangement, the EMM or the electrochemical micro machining is able to drill uh, holes with such fine resolution. Close to about probably 0 0.5 mm. Okay. Each of this hole must be in the range of a few hundred microns, I am sure. And uh, this is a blown up SEM image of the same uh, whole array okay. and this uh, right here illustrates the cross sectional shape of a single hole. So, the work material in this case which is made the anode is a work piece which is a chromium alloy uh, 1 chromium 18 and I uh, 9 titanium. The uh, thickness of the work piece is about 0 0.3 millimeters that is about 300 microns. Okay, and the cell voltage that you are applying to do this machining here is 18 volts. So, this gives you some feeling of uh, the kind of voltages, resolutions and hole diameters that you can achieve with different work pieces. Yet another example is borrowed from uh, Lawrence Scrub uh, as can be seen in this illustration here. Okay. So, this was reported in 2003. And uh, this talks about uh, again electrochemical micro machining of stainless steels by ultra short voltage pulses. Uh, the figure here is an SCM image of a pyramid which has been etched into a stainless steel sheet and again with the electrochemical pulse method. Uh, it is uh, conically shaped, you can see the conical shape right about here in the center uh, and uh, the this case is a tungsten wire with less than 5 microns diameter and uh, it, it was moved similar to a uh, milling cutter that is how uh, the process was accomplished 
and uh, as you know a milling cutter is actually uh, moving linearly on a surface. In this case although it is not a metal to metal contact like a typical milling cutter would do with a uh, surface in this case it is a electrochemical machining or electrochemical milling operation which does most of the material removal. So, it is a dissoluting the material away by a circular tool. So, this moves uh, although it is itself about 0.5 microns it moves along a path here which gives you an illustration of how this uh, cavity was uh, made or realized in a stainless steel sheet. There was a pulse duration of 25 nanoseconds that this group used and the pulse value was about 2 volts. Um, the electrode electrolyte that was used in this case about 3 molar HCl and a 6 molar hydrofluoric acid combination and uh, the independent workpiece and tool potentials were measured as minus 200 and minus 100 uh, millivolts respectively with respect to a standard hydrogen electrode. This again is another illustration of uh, what is a process capability related to ECMM. You can see for a pulse durations varying from 50 nanoseconds to 200 nanoseconds there are different hole diameters of the range of close to about 30 to 50 microns uh, which are obtained at different pulse magnitudes. So, this is an array 4 volts 200 min nanoseconds, 3 volts 200 nanoseconds these are the different hole diameters being made the different voltage nanosecond combinations. In this case the tool was a cylindrical platinum wire okay, and that had a diameter tip diameter of 50 microns and uh, uh, reported values here indicate what kind of uh, electrolyte was used is again a HCl um, hydrofluoric acid combination and the workpiece potential and the uh, tool potential are rated as minus 120 and 80 uh, millivolts with respect to a standard hydrogen electrode. Um, there are some more examples here is comparison of the holes uh, again drilled in stainless steel uh, with different electrolytes. Okay, so, you can see the combinatorial used here by varying the different molarities of the uh, hydrofluoric acid with respect to the HCl and you can see various surface topologies being generated based on the different electrolytes. So, by and large this happens to be the best combination to do ECMM. So, a process balancing like this has to be made for um, good machining to happen. Here again is a very beautiful uh, SEM picture of a prism okay. and this has been designed with a computer aided uh, program and uh, it was etched in stainless steel and this was actually done with a fast uh, rough cut of 143 nanosecond pulse duration uh, using CMM and uh, then there was a slow fine cut of 50 nanosecond pulse duration used in this particular case. The tool in this was again a cylindrical tungsten wire with 30 micrometer diameter. So, typically the um, movement here is in a similar manner as happens in most of the computer driven tools where there is a path uh, geometry which is provided in terms of a CAD file and uh, the XYZ stage is set in a manner so that it goes between different coordinate values in a uh, in a manner that CNC also uh, happens. So, it is a sort of computer numeric control uh, which is uh, uh, which directs the tool to move in a certain path which would uh, relate to the fabrication of the eventual feature shape and size. So, this is otherwise very hard to achieve you can look at the scale here it is about 50 microns meaning thereby that this one side alone is close to about 50 microns okay. and uh, the whole depth or the whole width here is about 100 by 100 microns and uh, the depth also uh, it cannot be figured out here in the SEM, but it is actually about 100 microns or so. So, getting such a feature using um, non lithography, non energy beam techniques is highly, highly cumbersome unless you go for electrochemical micro machining. So, uh, there are some beautiful illustrations of milling, electrochemical milling here. You can see um, this is borrowed by uh, Kim et al.'s work uh, published in 2005, where he talks about the fabrication of a micro hemisphere <coughs> with about 60 micrometer diameter machine by uh, a rough as well as finish cuts. Uh, the electrode used here is about 45 micron 
diameter electrode, uh, it is a wire and uh, the material that you are using of the electrode is stainless steel 304 and uh, you are basically using a 6 volt 60 nanosecond pulse on time duration for a 1 microsecond period to achieve this particular feature right here. Beautiful uh, again micro feature illustrated on stainless steel. Similarly, uh, you, you, this uh, again is another example where a micro column has been uh, with, with a width of 40 microns and a 20 micron length and a 85 micron height. So, very high aspect ratio has been machined by again a 65 micrometer disc type electrode okay. and uh, this is again an example of milling where the electrode is rotated because of which there is uh, machining taking place at this micro this nano nanometric level. So, use a um, 304 uh, SS stainless steel electrode in this case with 60 volt 60 nanosecond pulse on time duration and for a 1 microsecond period. This another is an illustration of a micro wall with 10 micron width. So, this is about close to 10 microns okay, and 80 micron height which is this height right here. Okay machine by a 65 micrometer diameter disc type electrode again using the same material 304 stainless steel with the 6 volt 60 nanosecond pulse on time duration for a 1 microsecond period. Okay. So, one uh, aspect which is a learning experience from this uh, particular work is that it is very difficult to reduce uh, the taper only by controlling the pulse condition and uh, because electrochemical machining as I think I have uh, illustrated many times earlier is a self tapering process. And so, a, uh, a typically a better idea would be to use a disc type of electrode okay, which in this case they have used, uh, chemotol has used and uh, you can actually have high aspect ratio of your microstructures. if the milling tool is disc shaped. So, again some very nice illustrations of ECM. So, let us now look at a little bit different process EDM and I think I had uh, detailed in the last lecture why we need to look at this particular process because uh, Although we are going to do the uh, numerical modeling and the process details uh, later, but in from an application standpoint, uh, ECM is combined with this EDM process to formulate a hybrid uh, making machining strategy which is called ECDM, it is electrochemical discharge machining. And so, you must understand the basic principles etcetera here and some application standpoint what EDM does and how ECDM would be different from ECM or ECDM or uh, uh, EDM. So, uh, that is the reason for uh, using this right here. So, just a brief uh, summary of what uh, this process is about. So, there is a electrode okay, which is mobile in nature and uh, it is basically the cathode and the work piece is made the anode here and instead of putting a uh, electro chemical um, uh, or elect instead of putting an electrolyte here or an electrochemical agent here. Uh, you put a insulating dielectric fluid and the, uh, the advantage of a dielectric fluid is that it provides a a path between the tool and the work piece right about in this particular gap okay, which is non conducting in nature. So, as this path is non conducting and you keep on charging this potential uh, to a to a higher negative potential, uh, there is a tendency that uh, the medium which is very small in this case which is an insulating medium breaks down and there is a discharge which happens because of the charge difference from the cathode in this particular case. So, a discharge is typically a momentary stream of electrons which is released by um, the cathode 
and they are driven by the field and the positive potential of the anode and they are accelerated and then in this condition they hit upon the work piece okay, which uh, leads to the uh, uh, discharge okay, of uh, uh, the uh, it, it leads to a situation where this discharge creates an ablation or a thermal um, thermally ablated zone uh, with a melt pool okay. and uh, as the electron pressure reduces on the surface, uh, there is a tendency of cavitation to happen, because the medium itself is not so fast as the electron velocity and it has high inertia. And so, it takes some time for the medium to come back in to that portion. And so, for a momentary uh, instant, there is a creation of a low pressure zone, which creates the pull of the melt pool, which has been formulated and that is how you remove the material in this particular process. So, it is a useful tool electro discharge machining just as like electrochemical machining. Now, I am going to uh, give this details of the modeling process etcetera in later on lectures, but here from a standpoint of what EDM can do you can look at some of the components high aspect ratio systems you know examples uh, here are for example, um, you can have these small cavities or this gearings produced by uh, the EDM process or the electro electrical discharge machining process. So, for example, here there are two round parts here and the set of dies for extruding the aluminum. The aluminum piece is shown in the front. So, this is the piece and this is the die, these are the dies which are uh, used for extruding this particular piece. So, such examples are very commonplace where EDM is used for these applications. This for example, is another uh, illustration where there is a work piece made the um, anode and the electrode made the cathode and uh, there is a, a spiral cavity being produced okay, uh, by uh, either ECM or EDM type of operations. So, uh, having said that a slight variant of this process uh, is found in uh, very common place and very handy uh, tool for having complex shapes like L slots or cam profiles being cut and this is called wire cut EDM okay. and typically the process is uh, driven by a CNC. Uh, system. So, we that is why we call it CNC wire cut EDM. So, essentially uh, what it means is that you have a coordinate layout which is there and then between the coordinates uh, there is movement of the uh, particular tool okay, and that creates its uh, machining effect on the work piece. In this particular uh, case, there is a work work piece, uh, tipic, uh, which is made the anode. Okay, so the work piece is made the anode, and there is a supply, dielectric supply, uh, supply of dielectric fluid, insulating fluid in the work zone, and there is a wire, and this wire is normally made the cathode. Okay, so the wire actually is fed from a roll. You can see uh, between this roll here and this roll here the wire is being fed and as the wire slowly emanates out, um, it, there is a discharge which happens between the wire, the cathode and the work piece anode and wherever the wire moves. So, this slot right here uh, is an L slot which is otherwise seen in the top view. So, the wire actually the motion of the wire path would be first in this direction and then in this direction. So, the wire comes all the way into this and then goes like this and wherever the wire uh, proceeds there is a arcing because of which this complex L slot depending on the path or the guide of the wire uh, would formulate on the work piece. So, this is a very interesting uh, high capability process uh, which uh, is uh, uh, used in the domain of advanced manufacturing processes for uh, doing extremely complex uh, shapes and features. And I would just like to recall that if we are talking about micro gearing or if we are talking about uh, 
very small features of high aspect ratio, there is a possibility that if the stage itself which is feeding the wire in this particular case, the wire being about close to 80 micron diameter or so, uh, if the stage has a fine resolution of movement, then you can actually uh, be able to make small features or components uh, utilizing the effect of such small motions, such precision motions of the stage itself. So, the stage needs to be very fine tuned. So, this is how a wire cut EDM system looks like in the laboratory. This right here is that wire okay, and it is uh, passed between the rolls. One roll can be seen here, the other roll is probably out of uh, the picture and uh, there is a way to mount the work piece in this particular case, which gives uh, the basis of uh, EDM. So, let us now look at some of the uh, micro structuring being uh, done by wire micro EDM operations. Uh, some very nice illustrations by Benavides group uh, in 2002, uh, where uh, he talks about the creation of a, a small uh, ratchet wheel okay, with diameter of with the teeth thickness of about close to 250 microns in beryllium copper. Uh, so, the way to make it is that uh, they take a blank and then turn the blank on a high precision lathe and uh, uh, are able to structure it in a manner, so that there is a cup at the center here. And then my other fine operations like drilling etcetera, uh, these mounting holes or uh, the center mounting of these blank is being uh, formulated. Once this is formulated, they use a wire here. This right here is the wire between the two tick marks, okay. And they perform a micro wire EDM on of all possible teeth at the three levels of this uh, blank. The blanks are cut into three different levels, as can be illustrated here. And uh, Basically, you can also use another electrode uh, for removing the teeth from each other. So, once the blank has been formulated in three already, some machining has been done here, but the extent to which the machine can go is very limited in the radial direction in this particular case. Okay. And uh, therefore, uh, the tooth removing electrode sort of cleaves it diametrically. So, the electrode goes all the way to the other side here and cleaves it diametrically. So, that three pieces can be realized, which are independent discs with micro gearing cut on each of them. So, the wire micro EDM machine fabricates all the ratchet teeth on each of the three levels and uh, the final operation requires the removal of the ratchet teeth including a, a missing tooth in the middle level that is obscured directly above and directly below. Uh, by teeth that are not removed. So, this right here shows a detailed view SEM image of the wire micro EDM the ratchet teeth structure and uh, this is in nitronic uh, 60 stainless steel and uh, they have also done it for titanium alloys and they have seen that the process is quite favorable for titanium oil, machining titanium alloys also. Uh, by micro wire EDM. So, this is a very highly capable process now for uh, doing this micro features and structures. So, you can imagine the ratchet T 
teeth thickness of 250 means uh, this one section here okay, is only 250 micrometer thick and there are three such sections and different levels of this particular mechanism. So, this is one very fine example of what uh, CNC work at EDM can do. Apart from that, there are many other applications of the micro EDM process. Um, one of the examples here shows a machined complex micro cavity consisting of a square cavity, which is about 480 microns <coughs> wide. and 480 microns long okay, with a depth of about 40 microns. And there is a small pyramid at the center, uh, which is being made by the whole machining is being made by a micro EDM operation. Uh, use a radius of this cylindrical cavity of the extent of about 200 microns. And, uh, the depth of this cavity is about 100 microns. So, and if you look at the pyramid uh, structure, the pyramid is about 120 micron tall and uh, it is a square pyramid. So, each side of the square is about 60 microns by 60 microns. So, this comments highly about the way that EDM or the capability process capability of um, EDM to do 3D micro structured architectures or parts. Figure 2 again uh, is a electrode, a circular electrode, the SEM image of a circular electrode and this tip size here must be close to about probably 10 of tens of microns. So, this is doable again using a micro EDM process. And this cylindrical electrode was uh, prepared by uh, you know a, a, a wire assisted electro discharge grinding. Uh, unit the electro discharge machining process. And uh, I think I had illustrated further earlier that with another kind of an identical wire assisted ECM process we had produced about 2 microns of tip size. In this particular case, although the tip size is slightly higher, uh, it is about 5.2 uh, micrometer, but uh, it still uh, is a very high improvement over the other machining processes. Uh, which exist. Figure 3 here illustrates a complex uh, cavity machine by again a micro EDM uh, tool. The radius of the spherical cavity in this particular region is about 150 micrometer. Okay. And the conical cavity is uh, having a top diameter of 240 microns and a bottom diameter of 120 microns, the depth of about 60 microns. And uh, this conical cavity further is connected with this uh, spherical cavity. Uh, so, such inverted features in one case probably this part is through a die sinking operation, uh, where the uh, tool is a negative replica of this or it is a cavity. And in this particular case, the tool is a projection coming out of the tool surface, they can be done uh, parallelly on a surface. So, that is the capability of producing a three dimensional structured highly structured surface of uh, at the microscopic lens scale. And such uh, kind of operations demonstrate the capability of the micro EDM process, micro electro discharge machining process. Another uh, you know aspect of EDM uh, reported by you at all in 2002 which talks about a high aspect ratio blind micro hole kind of structures. These are the micro hole structures and the holes can be either triangular holes or square holes or even pentagonal holes depending on the uh, electrode that is being used. Okay. And this is using planetary movement approach okay, of the tool. So, the planetary uh, movement is in, the, in, the, in this case basically uh, smaller electrode moving or following across the hole the internal contour of the hole. Okay, so, the planetary movement of the tool electrode is widely used in this conventional die sinking EDM process. And one of the reasons why that is used is 
to give a sufficient gap for debris removal to take place. And so, the machining is always stable, uh, because of non accumulation of the debris at any part of the machining zone. So, particularly in cylindrical cases or in circular cases, you can uh, really follow this planetary motion. And uh, you can with this uh, drill, circular micro holes with high aspect ratio, okay, uh, a rotating electrode uh, is put inside the uh, tool. So, a similar kind of uh, machining cannot be done, if uh, the holes uh, concerned have non circular cross sections. For example, in this case it is a triangular hole or a square hole, but in that event a square blind uh, micro hole uh, can be machined by using a square electrode. Okay. So, you just develop an electrode which is very close to this and uh, maybe a good idea would be, if this square is reasonably small. Okay in comparison to the uh, square that is being illustrated. Uh, so, if in this particular case as I was saying if the square electrode is reasonably small, it can follow a square path okay, of motion something like this. Just as in this case there was a circular tool which was following a circular path and even you could have rotated the tool while following it. The square tool can also follow a square path and that would give you a very good machining operation. In this case for example, there can be a triangle, a small triangle and this triangle can follow a triangular path, okay, so that this whole thing can be machined accordingly. So, uh, there are different strategies that now people use for doing this uh, micro idiom with planetary movement or planetary motion. Okay. Um, in fact, all these holes are to the depth of about 2500 micrometers and in fact, if you look at one of these edges here or for example, this particular edge, they must be close to if this is 10 microns, this must be close to about 130 or 140 microns. Okay. So, having said that, uh, a very good aspect ratio of the order of about uh, close to 18 or so uh, is generated uh, using uh, this kind of a process. So, it is actually a very good and capable process for doing high aspect ratio structures at the micron scale. So, if you had uh, no planetary movement, for example, if this same process would have been produced by a normal electrode of the same size as the hole etcetera, the aspect ratio would then come to about close to 10. Okay. So, in a way it illustrates what the planetary motion does uh, in terms of debris removal, where uh, the activity can be prolonged over a higher amount of depth, so that the aspect ratio can increase accordingly. So, in 3D micro machining particularly when we are talking about large aspect ratio structures, definitely the planetary EDM, micro EDM is a very good strategy uh, to manufacture at this particular scale of the length. Let us uh, look at some more examples uh, and uh, when just because we are talking about aspect ratio, uh, I uh, would recall the LIGA process, which we had discussed earlier while doing the microfabrication. And this LIGA uh, process basically means uh, lithography uh, galvanofurman affurman. Okay. And uh, there is a detailed step of the LIGA process, probably in the next slide we will just recall some of that before going ahead. But this is a combination in this particular slide as uh, proposed by Takahata et al in 2000. Uh, this uh, is, is a case where micro EDM is being performed by combining it with a LIGA process. Okay. So, as you can see here there are various uh, steps just like lithography, you have a PMMA layer which is exposed to X-ray through a masking process and this um, uh, ultimately we want to produce these features right here. Okay. So, these are sort of uh, negatives of micro gearings okay, which are produced uh, in a high depth manner. So, in the first step what happens is that this mask is realized using either laser patterning or some other method with which this small structure here gear like structure can be uh, made as openings typically as openings. Okay. So, the mask has openings in the shape of micro internal gearings. These are internal gearings as can be illustrated. Now, if you look at the printing resolution of these gears the internal gearings are of the diameter of something like 
close to 200 microns okay and they are distantly placed away from each other by close to about 1 millimeters or so so you take a resist pmma and using x ray lithography uh, why we need x ray lithography is because uh, x rays are typically high energy radiations and they can go up to a larger depth within the pmma material so in this case it is needed that the uh, depth up to which the internal gearing should go on that layer is about 300 microns or so. Okay. So, that is why it is needed. Uh, so, you take a uh, mask and expose the PMMA selectively. So, you are exposing the PMMA selectively here and uh, you are exposing up to um, you know a height of or a, a, a depth of about 300 microns of diameters of internal gearings which are only 200 microns in nature. So, it is the aspect ratio is about 1.5 in this particular case. Now, the PMMA is changed as soon as it gets exposed to certain uh, region. So, supposing if you were to expose this region which now you can see converted as this hatchet area in this uh, particular uh, case, the uh, structure the properties of PMMA here has changed and uh, you can develop these PMMA uh, exposed to PMMA out uh, very well okay, using uh, some kind of a development solution etcetera. And so therefore, there are these crevices which are formulated uh, on the PMMA itself. So, you can actually do electroplating of this uh, cavities and then after electroplating you can planarize and uh, polish on both sides, so that you are left with only those features which have been embedded inside the PMMA as uh, electroplated features. And the uh, electroplating is done using this uh, substrate here, which is uh, uh, a conducting substrate that you should always remember conducting substrate. Okay. And there is always a deposition of platinum along the uh, along the crevice which has been created here of 300 microns. Okay. So, it is all deposited along this whole crevice as well as on the conducting substrate here. The substrate is later on removed as in this particular case you can see the substrate is actually has been removed uh, and the conducting substrate is gone uh, from here. And you have now cavities like illustrated here open on both ends which can be used for further machining. So, now the advantage here is that these cavities are already pre coated with platinum. right? So, they are pre coated with platinum, they are platinized and they are like metallic in nature. So, it, they can be made an electrode. So, typically in this case if you want to do EDM operation this is made the cathode okay? and uh, uh, the work piece in this case has a size which is close to the hole that can be seen here. Okay? and uh, the work piece is made the anode. So, this work piece is positive and uh, this is the cathode negative. And so, uh, the work piece which was otherwise a cylinder is now cut into a gear which is SEM the SEM image of which is shown here. So, this is the micro EDM work piece. The advantage in this case and uh, finally, the cross sectional area of this electrode looks as beautiful as this, where uh, you have to ensure that a gap of about 3 microns is always there between the electrode and the EDM gear. So, that is more about process setting and probably the monitoring of the gap current value. Okay. So, with the CNC control you can do that kind of a feed rate of this micro gearing into this particular structure. So, this is about the capability of um, high aspect ratio microstructures uh, uh, in combination with various processes like LIGA etcetera. These are some other examples again you know you can see how high aspect ratio uh, structures can be developed by uh, micro wire EDM using the same concept of LIGA plus EDM as has been illustrated before. These are pillars of dimensions 80 to 525 microns. Um, in, in length scale. So, 80 microns is the uh, breadth or the thickness of the pillars and the uh, 525 microns is the depth of the pillars and these pillars are being printed at 400 micron 
depth. So, they are very high aspect ratio structures which can only be obtained through this specialized process. This again is a steel gear assembly, okay. it is a steel gear wheel cut it uh, with a 20 micron tungsten wire okay. and uh, this is with one trim using the CNC wire cut process, EDM process as had been uh, illustrated earlier and uh, the gear wheel has only an outer diameter of only about 500 microns. So, that is how small this gear is and a height of about 6 mm. So, you can think of the high aspect ratio that is involved in this kind of a structure and you can see the number of teeth in this particular case is 8. Okay. So, there are about 8 teeth uh, made in this uh, gearing. So, such is the power of this 3D uh, novel 3D microstructuring process. Again another very good example of uh, uh, again a ceramic uh, gear wheel, okay. mm, the height is 10 mm and the OD is about 1 mm, number of teeth are 8 in this particular case. Again in for micro fuel cell applications, uh, uh, Scoot et al has shown uh, very small channels uh, increased with the increased uh, exchanging surface for hydrogen oxygen reaction to take place in fuel cells. Okay. And so, this uh, illustrates a carbon paper fiber uh, micro fuel cell and uh, the channel sizes are about close to 500 microns area is only 15 to 25 millimeter square. And the tungsten wire that is used in these applications is only about 500 micrometers. Uh, uh, long, uh, diameter. So, uh, that is again another uh, very good illustration of what micro wire EDM can do. I will just briefly illustrate as I promised the LIGA process and uh, because uh, you know it is important in a way that LIGA is combined with the EDM to make many useful features. So, here for example, uh, there are different steps in a LIGA. So, just like lithography you irradiate the resist here uh, with the mask here the word IMT is written as uh, portions which are black and portions which are transparent. This typically means that the portions which are blank are uh, or, or, or transparent are uh, beam transparent and the portions which are indicated as black are actually beam opaque. So, they are stopping the x-ray beams from going into the resist. So, wherever there is non exposure there is a retention of the resist. So, the IMT gets retained here and then you can actually electroform by depositing metal on this particular uh, uh, set of words formulated at the micron scale and uh, then you can strip off the uh, unirradiated resist okay. uh, and it is uh, because of that uh, the portion of the resist which has not been irradiated which is actually here uh, this is made on that resist by the by. Um, so, when this gets removed then you can actually have these IMT structures or features coming out Okay, uh, in this demolding process and then you can do a secondary electroforming process also to make uh, plastic or metal uh, sheets out of it. So, that is why it is called galvanoforming upforming. Okay. So, there is a forming which is involved, there is a galvanic coating uh, of the material which is involved using a metal substrate. In this case, uh, this substrate here is actually metal for doing this coating and then there is also lithography involved by using high energy x-ray beams. So, uh, this is a very good process uh, illustrated by Blay et al uh, in science reviews uh, some time back. This, this slide has been borrowed from his paper actually and uh, uh, there are a lot of applications that LIGA has to offer. This is a nickel honeycomb structure for example, fabricated on uh, processed silicon wafer and uh, this has been obtained by again LIGA process uh, where uh, the the initial process was hot embossing driven, but then later on electroforming was used okay. and uh, the width of the walls in this case are about 8 microns, height is about 100 microns. Similarly, these are liga made nickel micro scale structures with different shapes in the third dimension. The total height is about close to 520 microns. Similarly, uh, there has been reports made by Blay et al about different uh, uh, electrostatically made liga nickel micro motors or micro turbines 
as can be seen very clearly in these particular figures, where the uh, diameter of the micro turbine in this case is only about 130 microns and the height is about 150 microns higher than the diameter. So, it is a large diameter uh, high aspect ratio structure. And uh, you know if you really test this uh, turbine, it can generate about 10 to the power of 8 rotations. Okay. Uh, that is how about the uh, lifetime is of this turbine and the revolution that it can go up to is very high of the range of about 150,000 rpm. Okay. So, the, such is the uh, beauty about these micro machined micro scale processes. Uh, with electrostatic liga again you have made the uh, uh, people have reported this micro motor uh, which is made with a two third rotor of diameter 700 microns and stators this is the stator part okay, uh, with the wheel dia of approximately 250 microns for torque transmission. And uh, you can actually get the power of this motor through this small pinion wheel and this can rotate at a very very high rpm and the scale only is few microns. So, you can imagine the kind of <coughs> power rpm ratios that can be obtained at this particular scale. Again another very important example that Liga has to offer, you can make micro channel arrays with a high aspect ratio of close to 12. Okay. Uh, here there are these are three dimensional micro structures again, micro column array and well arrays, micro grooves with curvatures. Uh, some of these uh, microstructures with high aspect ratios of about 30 or more and then these are the micro lens arrays all made with Liga processes as reported by Wang et al in 2001. So, Liga really is a very powerful tool. So, I am going to now illustrate a little bit about uh, uh, the ECDM process because naturally we have talked about high aspect ratio by combining Liga with EDM and uh, you know these hybrid processes always seem to work better than the normal routine processes. And uh, ECDM is such a process where the power of both the EDM and ECM are combined in one go together. And for that I would like to just illustrate that uh, you know if this is the electrode supposing in an ECM operation and there is a work piece here okay, close to it and the electrode as you know is made the <coughs> uh, cathode and the workpiece is made the anode and supposing there is an electrolyte instead of a dielectric fluid which comes into this region which starts the gasification process. Okay. So, there is some gas bubbles which are generated close to both the work pieces as a result of which there is a gas film which develops between the anode and the cathode. So, this leads to uh, the formulation of a uh, insulating gas layer I would say. And uh, again the concept of discharge may come in here as was illustrated in case of EDM before. So, there is a discharge which happens because the breakdown uh, of the you know the, the electrical breakdown of the gas like medium and the film actually gives way to a path of electrons. Up, up, uh, to the current by uh, by making a path of electrons uh, by making a path to the flowing electrons to flow between the cathode and the anode and it is by thermal ablation that eventually the bulk material is removed and then if ecm is still going on in the same uh, uh, in the same region there is going to be a self leveling activity done by ecm after the edm operation is done so it's a combination of ecm and edm which is actually known as electrochemical discharge machining. And this machining uh, has been able to demonstrate a much smoother surface than normally the EDM or ECM standalone. And not only that, this can be done on brittle and hard and insulating substrates also. So, this is the beauty of this ECDM process and I am going to just uh, give a few examples where ECM and EDM are combined together for giving certain you know uh, machining certain non-conducting ceramic materials. For example, 
in this particular case you can see there is a ECDM process uh, which has been able to carve out a small complex feature in a ceramic work sample. Okay. And this typically is machined at 90 volts uh, with a solution of sodium hydroxide 25 percent. And uh, although the MRR is very low at high voltage and high electrolyte concentration, <coughs> MRR is something which can be achieved probably by varying the various uh, concentration voltage values. And uh, uh, the thing which is uh, important for me to tell here is that at a higher uh, electrolyte concentration, uh, there is an increasing uh, overcut in the machine okay, and the uh, accuracy of the uh, machined surface varies at a higher concentration. So, typically people prefer either medium or lower concentrations of electrolytes in this ECDM case. Okay. Uh, this again is an illustration of uh, it is a micrograph of a machined hole in a ceramic work sample machined at 80 volts 25 percent NaOH uh, electrolyte. There are some other examples alike uh, of ECDM processes where in Pyrex glass people have used uh, ECDM micro milling. Okay. So, there is a disc type motion here of a uh, tool which is actually rotated at a uh, very high rpm 200 rpm or so and which actually creates this discharge machining the chemical electrochemical discharge machining happen between the substrate okay and uh, the tool and uh, in this particular illustration you can see some beautiful images of channels being produced okay of uh, at the SEM images of channels being produced at a pulse on time of roughly about 2 milliseconds okay. and uh, the tool travels in this case at a constant travel rate of 100 micrometers per minute. So, the process is little slow in terms of the yield of the, MR, uh, the machining removal rate etcetera. And uh, the tool diameter in this case which has been used is a cylinder of about 200 micrometer diameter. So, I think I am towards the end of this lecture and uh, we have covered more or less the applications related to ECM, EDM and a combination hybrid process of a LIGA and EDM as well as ECM, EDM called ECDM. Okay. So, in the next module we are going to uh, work more on the process details related to the electro discharge machining operation and try to model the process from a physics point of view. Thank you.